Okay, let's pick up where we left off last time in the file pivot table of data final one, the worksheet assist rebound. So if you recall, we had the percentage of rebounds and assists by position. Well, the Chinese say a picture is worth a thousand words, so wouldn't we like to summarize this with a chart? So to create a pivot chart, as it's called, you can go to the Analyze tab in 2013. Or I believe it's the Options tab in 2010. All you got to do is go in here, and if I go Analyze, there's Pivot Chart. And you, this kind of chart is fine. You can always right-click, change the chart type. But there's a nice Pivot Chart there. Okay. And that's going to show me, oh, by the way, that field list only shows up if you're in the Pivot Table. And if you don't see it, you can right-click, show field list, and it'll come back. But you now can see the centers don't get many assists, and the point guards get a lot of assists and not many rebounds. The centers get a lot of rebounds. Power forwards are getting more rebounds. They're a higher percentage of the rebounds than centers, which is sort of interesting. I guess it's sort of nebulous who's a power forward and who's a center. Okay. So now what I would like to do, I guess I'll make a copy of this worksheet. Okay, so I could call this, I guess, pivot chart. Okay, let's suppose I want to analyze this stuff by team, these statistics by position, rebounds, and assists. Well, first of all, let's get rid of the percentage, go back to the raw total. So if I go show values as, no calculation, I can see right click, show values as, no calculation. Okay, so I want to see how we did on team. So I go in by team. So I go in here, I don't see the field list. The field list shows up when you're in the pivot table. But if I go right-click, show field list, then it pops back up. So let's suppose I want to put in filters, teams. So I can drag that right here. Okay. So now up here, this is the filters. I can pick any subset of team. Select multiple items. So I could pick deselect all, I could pick the Bulls, and I could pick the Mavs. Okay, so now my stats are for the bill, uh, bull, Bulls, sorry, picking football, the Bills should be pretty good this year. So I could pick the, so the totals are for the Bulls and the Mavs. And I could filter here, and I could pick a subset of positions, just center and point guards. So now the totals are for the Bulls and the Mavs, centers and point guards. I can clear the filters by clicking right here. Well, the problem with the filters is you don't know what you filtered on. Okay, I mean, here, like here, I don't know what teams I picked. Here I can see what I picked, but let's unfilter, select all. Because I cleared the filter. But see, I don't, I picked Brooklyn, and what was it? I picked Brooklyn, and I picked, uh, sorry, Dallas and Chicago. Okay, but I didn't even remember that. Now, a really cool thing you can do with Excel 2010 or newer, you can do insert slices, and then you can see what actually, what subset of a given category you clicked on. So if I go in here, go insert, okay, slicer. And Excel 2013 does it, his timeline is a slicer for time. I don't think we need that. But I would look like to slice it on team and position. So I'd say team and where is position right here. Okay, so now I see these really cool slicers. Yeah, I don't really need the chart. Although the chart would update well, the chart would update. Let's leave it down here. It would update based on what I picked. So now I, you can see I picked Chicago and Dallas. Now if I clear that filter with here, I see them all. But I can pick any subset of teams with the shift key. I can pick ones that are contiguous. With the control key, I can pick those that are not contiguous. So I can pick center and point guard here. You can see exactly what I filtered on. And if I go Dallas, and then I hold down the shift key, I've got Dallas through Houston. And now I know those totals are for Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Golden State, and Houston, and they're for the centers and the point guards. And the pivot table is basically just showing centers and point guards for those teams now. So those slicers really provide a kind of dashboard, which is really cool because today everybody likes to click on stuff. And again, one thing you can do is you go to, if you're inside a slicer, okay,
you should be able to see basically slicer tools. Well, it's not showing up on my screen, I think, because of the screen capture. But from slicer tools, you can change the number of columns there. It's a right click, I can get it here. Slicer set. Okay. So, so uh, there are various settings I can go A through Z, okay, and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I should be able to see when I'm clicking inside a slicer. Oh, here it is. Slicer tools. I apologize. It wasn't showing up. There. I think uh, my video recorder was hiding. But if I go slicer tools, I could say for those teams, let's say five columns. And if I click there, sorry, I was in the wrong one there. I want to be in this. I mean, I've got, I don't want to go five columns there. Let's just clear that. So if I go slicer tools options, I'll go back to one column there. Okay. But now here, if I can click in this slicer, this might be useful to have five columns. Now I need to make it bigger, like there. So now I could pick any subset of teams really easily because I can see all those teams on the screen at once. So again, if you're inside a slicer, you should see slicer tools. For some reason, it wasn't showing up. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of stuff on pivot tables, but basically they let you do a lot more than the sum ifs and the count ifs. But when you add new data, you have to click refresh, okay, or you change data, you have to click refresh, make your data a table if you want things to update when you add data to the bottom. And the Excel formulas automatically update. And sometimes it's easier to use the formulas because they give you exactly what you want. And the Sorry, the pivot tables give you a lot more information than you need. Okay, so we've got we taught you a lot of useful Excel stuff. So I think we're ready to get back to sports. So we're going to introduce you to the powerful tool of Monte Carlo simulation, and show you how that can be used to model simple situation, uh, build a simple model of how an inning in baseball goes based on how good the hitters are. And sophisticated major league teams have complicated and very realistic baseball simulations. And you may have, like me, grown up playing those sim uh, simulations, Diamond Mine Baseball. I grew up on Stratomatic and Big League Manager. You may have played APBA. I think a lot of general managers in sports grew up playing table baseball games. So for those of you who are in middle school and you want a job in sports, maybe you should play those table sports games. Okay, we'll see you in the next video on Monte Carlo Simulation. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book, which is here. And with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.